Hi, Clint Coons here with Anderson Business Advisors. And in this video, I'm going to discuss setting up an adult care facility from an asset protection point of view. A lot of investors have seen an opportunity here when it comes to investing in adult care facilities. And I'm sure you can appreciate the amount of liability that comes from creating an adult care home. I mean, let's face it. When you have people who are under your care, you now become responsible for them and for those people who work for you. So if anything were to happen, all that liability is going to fall back on you, even though you may not have done anything wrong. You have a rogue employee who's doing something that they should not be doing. And as a result, people are injured that are under your care. So what's key here is to structure your business the right way to minimize your overall liability exposure. One of the other issues that come up with adult care facilities is that you may intend to uh, set up several different homes around an area and you want to create a brand for your adult care facility. Well, how do you go about protecting that brand and ensuring that the assets you're making or the money that you're generating and the assets that you've acquired are not put at risk? What I want to show you now is how I typically structure an adult care facility to ensure that these needs are met for my clients. So let's get started. Now, when you're setting up an adult care facility, one of the things you should consider, uh, of course, is asset protection, but also taxation. I like to create a corporation for the main facility. That is, this is where your business should be run. This would be a corp. Now, this could be an either an S corp or a C corporation. It truly depends on your individual tax preferences. I am more uh, keen towards C corporations and S corporations because they like the flexibility a C corporation provides you as far as income is concerned. That is, the with a C corp here, none of the income flows down onto your personal 1040 like an S corporation is going to do to you. Now, this is important if you've looked at any of my other videos when it comes to qualifying for loans, not having a flow through entity on your return does help because out of the C corporation, what you'll be doing is you'll be an employee along with all your other employees, you'll be paying yourself a salary. So you only show W-2 income on your 1040. Okay, so you start up, this is going to be your adult care facility, this corporation, and it's going to be registered in the state where your business is taking place. So we're not going to create this, for instance, in Wyoming or Nevada. Assume our adult care facility here is going to be in Arizona. So we're going to create an Arizona corporation. Now, before you go about creating this entity, if you desire anonymity, that's going to change how we set this business up. That is, if you don't want anyone to know that you're associated with this corporation, you want to make it really difficult for someone if they're coming after you to bring an action against you, then you wouldn't necessarily start with a corporation. You're going to tweak this structure a bit and you're going to first create an anonymity shield. So let's call this option one. Option one, all right, here is no anonymity. All right, so that's if you don't want anonymity. If you do desire anonymity, then what you want to do is look at option two, which would be where we would start with a Wyoming LLC down here, where we have a nominee protection. So you may, you're going to be a manager and member of this LLC, but when we set it up, we don't put your name on it. We use a nominee, so your information is kept private. So no one associates you with this limited liability company. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this LLC and we're going to set up your business, again, using Arizona as the example. Rather than go with a corporation, we'll set up an LLC in Arizona taxed as a C corporation. Now, the distinction between these two entities is that when I file this entity here, you have to list who the members are or the manager. So I'll typically set it up as a member managed LLC. And this entity here will be the member of this company uh, that we create in Arizona. So when I file for this LLC in Arizona, I'm listing the information on this Wyoming limited liability company. So it protects the identity of my client. So my client is actually a manager of this LLC but no one is aware of that because if they look at the state filing and see who's in charge of this business, it's going to point them to Wyoming because that's the only thing that's going to be listed on the state filing. They're going to look at the Wyoming LLC and it's going to point them to a nominee manager, which is somebody we have over here named A.T. Mathis, who is an attorney in our firm. He's, he's on over 17,000 entities. So it provides this anonymity shield. So it points them over here. So nothing points back to you. So this would be option two. 
Option one, just set up a corp. There's no anonymity. If you desire anonymity, go with option two here uh, through this structure. And in fact, this structure is going to come into play when you uh, are start setting up your homes. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. So again, create your entity, be it a corp or an LLC is what we want to get set up. Now, this entity that we create is going to be for your main business. What I mean by that is that is where your activity will run. So when you're bringing in uh, uh, individuals that will come in and want to utilize your services of your facility, then you would have them contract with this entity right here, this parent company. So this is the one you're actually going to brand as well. So let's call this um, Ever uh, Green Homes. All right, so this is the name of our company, Evergreen Homes, and it is taxed as a C corporation. Now, the key here is that this is the entity that everyone's going to contract with. So all of the individuals who reside in your facility, they're only going to know Evergreen Homes. They're not going to know any other structure. They're just going to contract with this company. So all liability is going to run to Evergreen. Evergreen is going to be the one that's going to hire the employees. So everyone that works for your home will be contracted through Evergreen as well. So Evergreen takes in all of the liability. Now what's key here is if Evergreen's taking in all the liability, it should own no assets. We do not want to put assets inside of Evergreen. That is why what we'll do instead is we're going to create different entities to hold the actual facilities themselves. Because ideally, you're going to go out and you're going to buy a house where you're going to put the beds and you're going to bring in the individuals who are going to rent these beds from you and utilize your services. You do not want to own that property. If I were to put a property up here in Evergreen like this, or maybe you're going to do two or three, you see what happens here. If anybody brings a claim against Evergreen, then all three of these properties are at risk. Okay, that would defeat the entire purpose of this asset protection structure because now we just put our assets at risk in the entity which conducts the business. So we're going to separate those out. And instead, what I'm going to recommend you do is you're going to create separate LLCs for all of these homes that you acquire. Now, again, this is how we tie Wyoming back into this. You'll first start with a Wyoming limited liability company right here. And again, using the same nominee protections that I discussed, so your name doesn't appear here. We'll create this first, so we'll call this number one. Then you're going to set up an LLC in the state where the property is located. Well, I assume since we created an Arizona uh, entity up here for our business, since this is in Arizona and that's where you're running it, then your other LLCs will also be set up in Arizona. So we will create LLCs for each of the properties that we intend to utilize in our facility. Now, when I create this Arizona LLC, I will set it up as a single member disregarded entity. So it's a sole purpose, single purpose entity that again is going to be owned 100% by this Wyoming LLC. So this is number two. This is the second entity that we create in this structure. And this is the entity that is actually going to own the property, the facility that we're utilizing. So we put that right there. Now, if we're going to have another property, so say a little, you know, maybe a three or four miles away, you find another house you want to buy, then create another LLC here. So we create another Arizona LLC. And uh, again, another single member, single member disregarded. So all of the income flows right down to this LLC right here, this Wyoming one. And again, when we file it in this way, manner, um, everything points to here. So no one will know that you're associated with these limited liability companies. So I'm just going to stop there. We're just going to put two properties together. Now, we have our main business, which everyone is familiar with, and that's who they're going to contract with. This is where all the advertising is going to take place. You're not going to advertise these LLCs. They're just property owners. Think of these limited liability companies down here as uh, a third party. Like, I own those properties, and you wanted to rent them from me so you could provide these types of services. That's how you have to approach this type of structure. You can't look at it as if, I own everything and it's just one common enterprise because if you do that, that's how the courts would look at it if you're ever involved in a lawsuit. So once the structure is in place, then you'll enter into a lease agreement between these entities in order to utilize the property. So this LLC will lease the property to that corporation or that parent company and in turn it's going to pay this LLC a monthly rent for the use of the facility.
So what we've done here is we've isolated out all of our liability exposure, not our liability exposure, we've, uh, we've protected all of our assets. So if anything happens up here, we don't lose the properties. So we can set up a new business and go back into adult care facility uh, business, you know, three months later after this company was shut down. So that's how I would structure your adult care facility. Now, the other thing you need to keep in mind is that as the profits come into this business here, do not allow those profits to accumulate in the business, all right? Get those profits stripped out. You're gonna take them out, depending on the type of structure you take, they'll either come out as a W-2, they'll come out as a distribution uh, of your business. And so they're gonna be paid out to you. Now, when you receive that cash, of course, what you should also consider doing, creating is a separate entity over here. We call it our cash holding LLC. This would be my cash LLC right here. And I'll set that up in maybe Wyoming or Strong Asset Protection State. And I'll start accumulating my cash here. The reason I want to keep cash down here and not up here is for the same purposes that this entity is the one that has all the liability. So if it gets sued, they're not going to take my cash from me. Now, oftentimes when I draw out the structure like this and I'm working with a client, immediately they become concerned. They say, well, Clint, if my cash is here and I need it up here, how do I access it? Well, it's real simple. You got the cash here. Remember, you're in control here and you're in control up here. So all you have to do is enter into some type of formal arrangement between these two entities. For instance, you might consider loaning the money. You could loan the money up to the corporation and what I would do there, if I loan the money, I would then in turn file a UCC1 financing statement against this corporation to uh, secure any receivables that corporation has to ensure that I'm protected should that company be sued, that I would be the first in line before a creditor could take my actual receivables that are coming in. So you could loan the money. You could take a distribution back out to yourself and recontribute the money. There are other ways to get the funds up there uh, that'll give you access to them. The key is that you're in control of the entire structure. So when it comes to structuring an adult care facility, you have to be aware of the liabilities and then plan around those liabilities. Create structures that create firewalls between your assets and your potential creditors. Great opportunities to make money in the adult care field, but also comes tremendous amount of risk. You can minimize that risk with a little bit of planning. At Anderson Business Advisors, we're here, here to help. My name's Clint Coons. Look forward to talking to you soon.